Good morning, JJ. Good morning. Good morning, Sheila. I was live in a different, uh, my different FB this morning. <laughs> I thought I was already in JJ, but uh, here we are this morning, and uh, we thank the Lord for giving us this privilege to come again together and um, study the Word of God. Okay, so may your uh, day be blessed today and I pray that the Lord will uh, give you peace and comfort as uh, you go along uh, this day. Our passage today is found in um, Psalm 139. 139 of Psalm is the Psalm of David and here we go from the Director of Music. Of David a psalm okay he says here you have searched me Lord and you know me you know when I sit and when I rise you perceive my thoughts from afar you discern my going out and my lying down you are familiar with all my ways before a word is on my tongue you know you Lord complete know it completely you hem me in behind and before and you lay your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heaven, say you are there. If I make my bed in depths, in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I, sure, if I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me, even darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That is uh, Psalm 139 this morning. Uh, good morning, Bernadette. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word and uh, let's pray first. Father, we thank You for this beautiful morning that You have given to us. And we pray, Father, that we'll have a good time together in uh, studying Your Word. Keep us safe today and I know You will never leave us nor forsake us. Bless each one who will be coming to join us in this meditation. And also, may you help us, Lord, in our decisions for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord for this beautiful day that God is uh, um, leading us to do today. And whatever things He wants us to do today, may we always do worshiping Him. Whatever we do, His name will always be glorified. So, um, this is a beautiful subject this morning. Um, we have the verse there, okay? The verse is, um, verse 14, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That is a very good verse today. And um, I pray that uh, we will uh, um, stick on to that. It's because uh, sometimes it is very controversial verse. But uh, it is a very nice verse for us to study this morning okay so um, when you hear or read this verse what things are going into your mind okay I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made 
Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. The word fearful there in verse uh, 14. Okay. Fearfully or fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, that verse there. Okay. Um, the context does not mean, the context of this verse does, that does not mean that you will be literally scared or literally be afraid. It, but it means quite the opposite. That you were created by God with great reverence, heartfelt interest, and respect to be unique and set apart. So when God says, I praise you, or uh, David says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made, it means that God created you, made you with great reverence, with heartfelt interest and respect to be unique and set apart. So you are different from other people. I am different from you. Although we are all human beings, but our DNA is different, okay? But we are fearfully and uh, we are created with great fear or with reverence, with heartfelt and with interest, okay? So fearfully, when translated in Hebrew uh, language, it, me it means reverence or heartfelt interest and with respect. So when God created you, He created you with, with, with a nice and good and interest. Okay? And also it means that He made you with great reverence. Carefully, okay? carefully made, wonderfully made. And it means that God created you with respect also. So wonderfully, when translated with Hebrew, means unique or set apart. So each person that is created by God, they are created unique. They are, they are set apart from others. Okay. So in Psalm 139 verse 13, the other translation says, God made all the delicate inner parts of my body he knit me together within my mother's womb i was made wonderfully complex god knew me as he was painstakingly designing me with much loving care <laughs> Ganda, no? this is a good <clears throat> this is a good translation okay god made all the delicate inner parts of my body and he knit me together within my mother's womb. He was made one I was made wonderfully complex. God knew me as he was painstakingly designing me with much <clears throat> loving care. So we did not evolve, okay? We don't believe in evolution. We don't believe that we came from monkeys and fish and frogs and flies and all those insects. We don't believe that we are we came from there. We came from them. Okay, but we are created by God. Um, Adam and Eve were created by God directly. Okay, so we were we were we are not evolving, and we don't evolve from there. You and I are created and designed with a purpose, and uh, the blueprints of you are similar to other human beings but they are not exactly the same because you are unique i am unique i am unique and so are you in verse 1 and in verse 2 it says here okay in verse 1 and in verse 2 of this uh, passage <clears throat> it says you have searched me lord and you know me you know when I sit and when I rise, you perceive my thoughts from afar. Okay, that is in verse 1 and in verse 2. So God created you. He engineered you in and out. He knows the very intricate part of your body, your emotion, your physical attributes, your mind, your capacity to judge, your capacity to select, and many more 
Okay? You are created very unique. Um, it is, you are different from the animals. In verse 3, it says, You discern my going out and my lying down. So in verse 3, it says, God discerns your decisions. Okay? God discerns your thoughts. God, bad or good. He knows what is happening in your life. He is so interested in your life because man is the masterpiece of God. <clears throat> man is the masterpiece of God in his creation. So that's why he discerns your decisions, he discerns your thoughts, good or bad, and he knows what is happening in your life. Jennifer Heeren, and I quote uh, her this morning, it talks about the human body. What is uh, intricate <clears throat> in the human body? She said, The human body is a unique design of multiple systems that all work intricately together. The cardiovascular system gives you the energy to move. The muscular system gives you the ability to move, lift, and hold things. The digestive system processes food into energy and discards waste. The immune system keeps you healthy. The hormonal system determines your gender. The eyes cause you to see. The nose lets you smell. Tongue and mouth uh, let you eat and taste. The ears enable you to hear. And your skin enables you to feel textures. You have the ability to encounter an incredibly diverse world with an equally amazing diverse body. So our skin is also our defensive system, okay? Um, this is also our defensive system. There are, there are layers in our skin. And uh, before this... Um, uh, maybe small thing or virus or bacteria touch the skin, then we have some uh, defensive uh, parts there that God created. So, because of this, you are blessed, okay? You are blessed with, with brain. You are also blessed with brain. So, you can think, process, and create. Isaac Asimov said that the brain is the most complex and orderly arrangement of matter in the universe. Complex but orderly arrangement of matter in this universe. It is very complex. Your brain. You know? Your emotions help you to relate to other people and feel compassion. You feel mercy. You feel grace. You feel love. All of these systems plus many more were uniquely designed to make you who you are. And that's you, okay? And that is why the, uh, David says, I am fearfully and createdly, I, we, he was created unique and he was created carefully by God. You have the innate ability to discern from right and wrong. Okay? Although <clears throat> that ability is hindered somewhat, until you connect to your creator you didn't just design he god did not design you to do your own thing he created you so you would desire an ongoing intimate relationship with god so you were designed with an intense need of the creator okay god he is uh, your creator he's my creator without a relationship with him you will always be searching for something to fill that void in your life. You have the brain, you have the feet, you have the hand, you have the body, and all of those um, important and intricate things in your life. But you know what? There is a, a hole. There is a space in your life that only God can fill. Okay? There is a vacuum in your life that only God can fill, and that is only God. He can feel that vacuum in your life, okay? Um, some 
people go with other relationship but without a relationship with him you will always be searching for something to fill that vacuum in your life some people wanted to fill that vacuum in their life by drugs by alcohol by food by money sex material goods or occupations hobbies travel success and fame there are these are some of the ways which they will try to fill this vacuum in their hearts in their life inside them they are looking for more they are searching for more but because this vacuum is created by god and only god could fill this none of those things will ever fill it okay so Maybe one day you'll, you'll say, Oh, I'll have enough money to feel safe and secure. I'll find the perfect spouse that will complete me. Maybe you will say, I'll get my dream uh, sports car or house and life will be grand. Or I'll be on the TV and people will know my name. I'll be the best in my field and people will scout me out. But you know what? That one day will never come. If you're not happy with who you are today, right here and now, you'll never be. You'll never be happy with who you are today unless you begin to have a relationship with God. You begin to praise God for creating you just as you are. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are created intricately, creatively by God. Okay? In Ephesians 2.10 it says, For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. We are God's masterpiece. And so if we are God's masterpiece, then we are created to fulfill what God has planned for us. If you are not fulfilling and I am not fulfilling what God is planning for my life, then I'll go to some other things. But those things that I said will never fill us. Complete. It never. It will never fill our searching and hungry hearts. In verse 6, it says here, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And um, in verse 6, it says, The knowledge of God about me is so comforting. And gives me security. So if you if you look at this verse and put your name there, okay. Uh, for example, Ronald, or maybe Red. Such knowledge is too wonderful for Red, or for Ronald, Roland. Too lofty for Ronald, Roland, and uh, Red to attain and put your name there. So, in verse 7, it says, Where can Red go from your spirit? Or where can Red flee from your presence? If Roland will up, will go up to heavens, God is there. Or maybe you could say, if Eric rise on the wings of the dawn. Or maybe we'll say, or maybe Bernadette will settle on the far side of the sea. Even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me. And this is very precious because this is a very personal thing. No? The knowledge of God about me is so comforting. And He gives me security. He gives you security. It gives you security because He is after our well-being. He is after our safety for us to 
to have joy and happiness. And God wanted to bless your life in this life, okay? In this life. He wanted to give you peace because He knows every strand of your being. We know that we are not in a peaceful condition right now, but He wanted you to have peace. Now, peace is not um, the security that you are experiencing around you, but it is a person inside you. If you have the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, then you can settle down, you have peace, okay? So there, let's go back to there in verse 7, okay? And um, maybe Sheila could do that. Where can Sheila go from my spirit? Or where can Sheila flee from your presence? And that is a very comforting uh, piece, okay? In verse 10, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me. If I say, surely darkness will hide me, and the light become light, and the light become night around me, even darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. And that is God, okay? And that is God to us. And we can be seen by God because He is after our well-being. He's not after our destruction. He is after for our good. This is how important we are to God, okay? This passage is not only telling us the power of God to be present everywhere. He is everywhere. He is present, okay? But it talks about why He is present everywhere. Why? He is there to take care of you, okay? Even sometimes we are in the darkest place of our lives. Now, maybe we have committed sin. Maybe we have committed some not good things in our lives, in our families, in our work. Even when others cannot penetrate our inner sanctum. But to God, everything is light. Even in darkness, He is the light. Darkness is light to God, meaning nothing is hidden from God because He wanted to keep you safe. He wanted to keep me safe. We have some moments in our life that we choose to do contrary, contrary to what God has designed for us. We are designed to have an intimate relationship with God, but men do otherwise due to our corrupt flesh that beg for more than the designed purpose of God to man. Fortunately, God made a way for us to repent and turn to Him by sending His very Son to make a way, to make us happy again. When you do finally realize that without God, you are unable to make the most of yourself, that's when things begin to change. Like the clay cannot mold itself to no matter how he hard, hard it tries. However, God the Potter cannot only mold his clay, but he also knows what his original design of you was. He is both a potter and an architect with a master plan. Okay, sometimes... In this fallen world, people are born with birth defects that disrupt one or more of the intricate system of the body. But God foresaw and even uh, know those defects because of sin. And He uses them for good when He looked for them. Like a blind person can develop hearing beyond the normal capacity like Beethoven. Conjoined twins can teach us about getting along with one another for they have to do it 24-7. And someone born without arms develops the ability to use their feet in a very wondrous ways. Another born without legs develops the upper body strength to get around smoothly. Now, even in this fallen physical condition, God made it possible that man can survive. How much more when you are complete? How much more if your mind is good and brain is not impaired? How much more when your body can move where, whenever and wherever you want? 
God is now teaching us to be effective into what we are made to be. To preserve the creation of God with, because we are stewards of this creation. To propagate to the world, to the whole world and show them that we are made in the image of God. So we are made with a purpose. We are carrying the image of God. And that people will know that we are created to fulfill what God's plan for us. As I close uh, this morning. So what now, my friends? You are special to God. And He, he is everywhere to keep you safe. He's looking after you. But the other aspect also is true. He knows what is the wickedness that you are planning to do. He knows your thoughts. And we cannot get away from God's presence. The only goal of God that He is like this is this, that you will be safe from the destruction that Satan can create in your life. So continue to declare God like David in verse 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. You hem me in behind and before. Okay, that is in verse uh, 17. Okay, and then uh, in verse 6 it says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And in verse 7, it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And so God is very um, interested in your life and in my life. He is, he is only looking for your good, not for your bad. God is after for, your, for the good of His creation, not to destroy it, but if you continue to be stubborn, then we will be placed in jeopardy. So, I challenge you to memorize this verse in verse 14. Okay? And pray to God. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know that full well. I pray that and even in our... Uh, difficulties in our thinking in our bodies and maybe you have some kind of impairment you can still praise god and say to him lord thank you because you made me wonderfully you created me to what i am so that i can fulfill the promise that you have um, given to me and that i will also fulfill what you want me to do so may the Lord God bless you today and keep safe always. And may uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord will always uh, touch us and uh, say to your heart that, Son, I love you. Do good. And we continue to, um, to bless God for this. Okay? Let's pray in closing. Father, we thank you for this very good morning that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord, because you have created us intricately, fearfully, with reverence, and we are set apart. You have an interest in us for our good. You have created us to fellowship with you, to communicate with you. Help us today as we serve you and give us strength. Help us, Lord, to determine what is good for the good of your name. And we will continue, Lord, to praise you. Help us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much. And may the Lord bless you and comfort you in this uh, time of uh, pandemic. And uh, He is there always to guide you.